The year was 1967. Gran had just broken in Plaza de Colón, located in Madrid, for one of the most ambitious projects Spain had seen in its modern history. Antonio Lamela, the project architect, had designed a pair of towers that would make as little contact with the ground as possible, giving the illusion that the project was suspended in air. To achieve this, he had proposed the towers, soon to be known as the Torres de Colón, to be constructed starting at the top, then hanging each floor thereafter. The first phase of the project was to excavate the subterranean levels. This is where the six levels of underground parking were to be located. Actually, it's one of the reasons Lamela had decided for the project to be built unconventionally. Traditional design would mean more columns, which would make it harder to achieve adequate parking spaces. But instead, by relying on two 7x7 7 7 meter cores for the main structural support of each tower, he has opened up ample space for parking and ramps in this irregular and small plot of land. With each day that passed, the cores continued to grow. Concrete was being processed and sent up to make each core on a 24-hour schedule. As each core rose, the wind speed began to pick up, sometimes as fast as 100 km per hour, resulting in the freezing and hardening of the concrete being sent up, rendering it useless. The workers had to devise a plan. They began heating the concrete at the basement level, enough so that the cold air would only slightly affect the concrete. The plan seemed to work as the cores continued to go up. Now the cores were complete, standing at 85 meters in height. Down below at ground level, pedestrians walking by stopped to stare. They're crazy, they exclaimed. Who in their right mind would build such narrow buildings, not fully understanding what was going on? Now that the cores were complete, the next phase required the structural heads to be attached. It was from these members that the rest of the floors would suspend from. But there was an issue. The crane and truss platform could not hold the weight of the structural head. It had to be sent up in two parts and assembled at the top. As the project became ready to move on to its next phase, political reasons forced the project to be halted, with no further information as to its continuation given. Now those below who walked by began to create rumors. Maybe they sent the architect to a mental institution. Now no one knows how to finish this thing. For three years, Torres de Colón had remained untouched, not knowing the future of its fate. The halt had been lifted, granting permission for the project to proceed. This halt had allowed the structure to settle, making future work on the project more complex. It was time for the floors to be hung. The contractor suggested to hang the floors two at a time to allow for faster construction. Because each building had its own core, each floor was an open plan that allowed the space to be easily adaptable to future program. Finally, the facade was covered with a curtained glass wall. In 1990, the fire code had changed in Spain, forcing buildings to have emergency stair exits. The stairs added to the towers were suspended from the top as well, unifying both towers. An art deco motif was added to the top to hide the structure and solidify the unity. Because of the motif, people of Spain now refer to the building as el enchufe, or the plug. 